seems legit. Legitimate, welcome back to my channel. Today I am making the Dior's book bag. How adorable is this? I have made mine out of fabric. Um, so there are a few alterations that we do, but nothing too major. The handles are really cool. They have tubing in them. We have a magnet in the top. And then this is what the inside looks like. I went with a solid blue just to really make everything stand out and be amazing. Um, so if you want to learn how to make this, please stay tuned. I have my laptop here with the instructions and here's all my pieces. For the lining, I am using waterproof canvas so I didn't need any interfacing. And then for the outside, I am using this cotton canvas which I have put my hefty, which is a Vylene 1050F. And then I've also put a base stabilizer to make the bag super stiff because it said it needed Decaville heavy and I don't have any of that. So the first um, section is obviously to cut them all out. That's fine, we've done that. Um, and then step two is put on your belt or webbing. This is just a decorative line of stuff. I don't have any ribbon or anything, but it tells you how far to measure down from the top. This being the top, because it's gonna fold over. So down from the top, you'll line it up and then it'll line up on all the bag pieces. But I'm not doing that because I don't have it. So. These are my fronts. They are fabulous. Um, the base piece, I did just put hefty in the middle. You can obviously do whatever you like though. And then, slip pocket is this one. So we're going to put it right sides together. And then on a stitch length of two and a half, I am going to stitch just these two edges. So we're going to start here. I'm going to stitch and backstitch. Always backstitch. And then backstitch at the other end as well. And then on this end, I'm going to again line up the raw edge. Stitch and backstitch. trim those tails and then it also says to trim off a little bit here and here so that we get a nice turn through. So I'm going to push into the corner. I'm going to grab like this and then push. So we're going to grab and then push, grab and then push. And then I'm going to push out that side seam so it's going to sit where I want it to. And you might need your turning stick or a sew all to get those corners really nice. Like that. I'm just going to push down all of the edges. Now this is our... Um, binding for the pocket so it says to draw a line like this and then put double sided tape along this edge here like so. I'm just going to use my scissors to trim it. You can tear it. Oh, I'm just not very good at it. It's fine. And then we're going to fold that edge. I'm wondering if this is meant to be vinyl because I'm going to have raw edges otherwise. We're going to fold it up to the line. So this is going to give you a quarter inch fold over. like that and I'm just going to smooth it down. So we've got, this is the look. So then I'm going to put the other edge right sides up like this and have the excess hanging over and 
think we're gonna stitch back stitch back stitch again at the other end because that'll just lock everything in place then what do they want us to do it says to just flip it over like so but first theirs is done in vinyl uh, and mine won't be so the first thing that we're going to do is tuck in the raw edge and then fold it down because I can't just chop off the end of this it'll wreck the fabric and it'll it'll fray so mine's because mine's not done in vinyl I probably don't need to turn under that much so I can trim off some of it but we are definitely going to bring that in and then down on the fold and then I'm going to tuck this edge in so it sits nicer like that and then clip it in place so this is going to the way I'm doing it at least with my fabric is it's just going to be on the one side it's not double fold binding or anything like that but you can see, I don't know if you can see here, but the end is still being a bit dodgy. So I'm going to grab one of my many glorious sew walls and I'm just going to tuck it under so that we won't see it. And it moved again. It's going to probably keep doing that. So I'm going to stitch. And then I'm going to go back through the first stitches. And I'm stitching an eighth of an inch from the edge of this bottom edge here. And then when I get close to this end, again, I'm going to get my sew all and I'm going to tuck in the raw edge because it keeps wanting to poke out. And then when I get to the end, I'm going to back stitch. And now I have a very cute accent on the pocket. I like it. So we're going to grab one of our lining pieces, which is this one, and it is wider than it is taller, and it says to put it down from the top like this there so I'm now going to pop move all of this out of the way I'm just gonna hold it in place into the center I can eyeball the center pretty well but you obviously can measure it if you want to as well I'm gonna stitch and back stitch and then with an eighth of an inch seam allowance I'm going to stitch around the three sides And then backstitch, I might backstitch twice at that top edge, just to make sure it's going to stay where it's told. Trim off all the tails that I have. And we now have a very cute little slip pocket. Um, done that. Take one of the handles. So my handles are just going to be out of the canvas. If this was cotton, I would have interfaced it, but it's not, so I didn't. And it's not four inches, so I have to think maths. Um, pretty sure there's the center. But I mean, I could be wrong. I've been known to be wrong. So what I'll do is I'll rule it from this side, and then I'll flip it around and check it, just to make sure. Yeah, okay, I'm good. When they're not whole numbers, my brain really needs to think about stuff. So it says draw a line and then fold both edges into the center and stick it down with double-sided tape. So I'm going to use my glorious three-quarter inch tape because I love this stuff. It is perfect for this exact job.
one and two. Now, you don't have to draw the line. I probably could have skipped that, but I'm doing this thing where I try and follow along with instructions. So, we're going to pick off this edge. God, I miss my nails. There we go. And then if you want to, you can do one side at a time and bring it up to and onto that line. And because this tape's so thick, it grabs on really well. If you don't have any thicker tape at the moment in your house, what you can do instead is put a shorter piece on each edge. Right. Peel off the backing again. Line it up. Squish it down. Down. And then I'm going to flip it over. Do the same thing. That's pretty in the center. Okay. Now we're going to fold it along again and we're going to top stitch at an eighth of an inch. So right on the edge. Now you can pre clip it or you can just do it as you go. Both options work out really very much the same. So I'm just lining them up. And back stitch out of habit. I'm going to grab the next one and chain stitch it. So we're going to grab this, pop it, line it up there, pop it under. those tails at the start. Done that. So we're now going to take our tubing, which I just so happen to have some here, and we're going to thread it into the handle. Now you need to have a, a spare amount at each end. So that's how much spare I need right there in total. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the tubing. I'm going to use my sharp scissors. This might make them blunt, but I'm using the back end, so it's not all bad. I didn't measure how much I needed. So we're just going to do two the same so that the handles are the same. And that'll solve that problem. Chop. All right. So now we're just going to feed the tubing into the center part and feed it through until both ends have this excess fabric like this. And your turning stick is perfect for this job. It's like it was made for it. So let's do the next one. And she pops. Turning stick, push on the edge, that was too far. Oh, actually, no, it wasn't. Good job, me. Done. Ta da! So, we're going to attach the handles. Lay the main panel right sides down. Hold up. That'd be this one. Lay the main panel right sides down and fuse or glue the main interfacing, leaving two and a half inches from the top. And, okay, I already did that. 
And now you just double sided tape to hold down the main lining panel. Okay, so we're going to attach this to this like so. I'm going to use my nice thick this because it'll work out really well. You can do it however you want. Uh, you could also use basting spray. Basting spray is definitely your friend. Uh, if you're using foam here, if you use the foam that I use, it will be double sided and you can iron the back on. So many options. I'm just for the most part doing what I'm told. So we're going to take this and we're going to line it up along the bottom and side edges like that of a voila now it should be stuck now fold now fold the top edge of the main panel to meet the line so like that except i've got a raw edge so this is problematic too flip the panel to the right side and install the magnet. So I'm going to use a rivet magnet so I can do that later. But you would install your magnet in the middle here through just this bit. I won't be doing that though because um... Okay, so one of the things I'm going to do that's different to the pattern, you probably should have made the outside in vinyl by the look of it because otherwise that's going to be a raw edge. And I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line. And this is going to probably mess some stuff up. But I'll have to do it to all pieces anyway. So it'll be right. I am going to draw a line. Half an inch down. And then put double sided tape. Along the edge here. Just so that I'm going to have no raw edge because this is not vinyl and while I probably should have checked that with the pattern this is a good way to just fix the problem so we're just going to fold that to the line it gives us just a little bit like that and then it can come down All right. So then we put the roll handle. Now we make it flat so that 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 join there will be in the center at the bottom. So like that, and we're going to measure in two and a half inches from the edge. So that's where the handle's going to go. And we're going to shove it all the way in so that I can clip it from here. And then again with this side. So we're going to open this this out so that the seams in the middle. We're going to roll it around. Measure in from the side. And that's where the handle goes. And then you can clip it there. like that. And I'm assuming now I can just top stitch down. Now that all the hard work's done, and then we're going to repeat that whole process to the other side. So, stitch, back stitch, over that one, over that one. I'm just making sure that all this raw edgeness is tucked underneath. Oh, it's cute. So now from the outside, we've got this. And if I take these off, ta-da, a handle. A very cute handle in a very cute bag. I like it. And again, I'm going to do a rivet magnet, so I'll do that later. Let's repeat all of that to the other side. So, grab this. And this is my other piece. Ignore my dodgy edge that'll be in the seam allowance and it's not going to matter. 
but I just thought I'd point it out that it's there because I'm sure one of you would notice it. Now, if this is not enough to hold it in place for you, you can of course use more tape or once you've stuck it down, you can go and stitch the edge in the seam allowance. You could do like an eighth of an inch and just join the pieces together so that they don't move later. Very real option for you. Line up bottom edge and sides and smooth it down. Flip, ruler, oh, the ruler's here. We're drawing half an inch to then tuck under a quarter. And I assume I'll be doing this to the other bits as well. Just because it's um, fabric. If this was a raw edge, you could just leave it. But it's not, because I didn't do it out of leather or vinyl or cork. So I'm just going to tuck this under. Do, 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 do. And then that will come down like that. And then again, we need to grab our handle and I'm gonna squish it so that that seams in the center. And it's gonna go under this way. We're gonna come in the same amount we did on the other side we want it all the same otherwise your handles will be crooked and that'll be weird put a clip see how that edge is not staying I'm just gonna put a clip on that too so that it behaves itself it's what clips are for to make things easier on you so again oh for eyeballing that I was so close I was less than a quarter of an inch out even for me, that was pretty impressive. So, it's under again. This is going to be the sunshiniest bag. Stitch and back stitch, because I can't help myself. And then we're going to go over. And over. And back stitch. And so then again, the handle is in the bag. We are up to the next page. Um, now fold over the handle so it's sitting straight on the edge and then rivet them. We can do that at the end. Gusset piece. All rivety things I'm gonna do at the end just because you can you don't need to do them now so this is my exterior and here is my lining piece and you can see that they are indeed shorter on both ends so what I might do to join these I'm gonna flip them over and double-sided tape again you could use basting spray or you could use glue or whatever you want you could just stitch it you could clip it in place and then top stitch it down but this is the easiest and quickest way it does make you use up a bit of tape though so just to keep that in mind so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the center on both sides crease it, find the center of this, and then just line it up because that, again, is the easiest way to figure it out. Alright, so there to there, that is in the center. So, I want to pick off the backing while holding it in place. and then stick it down and then I can just grab these slowly pull them out from underneath making sure that it's all lined up 
smoothing my way along like so. Ta-da! Now it's one piece and you can kind of maneuver it easier. So I'll be doing that same thing again where I draw my half inch line to be able to tuck it under. And I'm really hoping this won't affect the overall size of the bag. I'm hoping I can make it work. Leave that thought with me. It is only a little bit that we're losing. But we're losing it everywhere. So theoretically, it will be fine. Maths works out. Because I took it off the main panels, doing the same to the side panel should therefore still make it the same size. Logically. Right? Right? But it needs to be done. You can also iron this if you don't want to double sided tape it. I just don't want to stand up because I'm quite happy here doing the bag. Really? Tuck it down like that. And then this will just come down like this. You just want to make sure that we're tucking the same amount, which is to there. And then I'm just going to top stitch that down too while we're at it. And the other side. Logically, we should be good now. Trim off those tails. I separated the join. This is now what we've got. And so now we're just up to assembling it. So we are going to push wrong sides together. I'm also going to find the center. I might even do a little clip since we're going to put binding over this and you won't see it anyway. That is the beauty of this. And then we're going to find center bottom of the main panels. Little clip. And the other one. This is quite a quick bag to construct. I know I still haven't put on the rivets and stuff. I will do that. I'm just going to do it at the end. Because it's not going to directly affect it at the moment. So with wrong sides together like this we are going to clip the main panel together and I'm going to put the clips fairly close I have a feeling we're about to have some drama and then I'm going to come up to this top edge and I'm going to clip and we're going to come down towards the corner we always do corners and curves last, people. I should have also made all the clips face the gusset piece, since that's the way we're probably going to sew it. Oh, would you look at that? Me and my maths worked out perfectly. Yay! Ta-da! It's amazing what I can eyeball. Now you can see there's raw edges, that's because we're going to put binding over this. I've got the same fabric for my binding. Um, you could put a contrasting colour if you're feeling sassy and confident. Alright, look at that. That's how we're doing it. So. I'm just going to move all of them. Let us stitch with a half inch seam allowance. Stitch, back stitch. I'm going to run out of bobbin thread soon, I'm sure of it. We're coming all the way down. Needle down, pivot, flatten the bag out. 
And over we go. Oops, that is much too less of a seam allowance. So we're just going to come back up to here, through that again. We're going to get to the corner. I'm going to put those clips away. Pivot. Oh, I'll need to go a little bit further. There we go. And back stitch at the top. Doesn't that look fabulous? Now we're going to attach the other side. Exactly the same way. Facing the gusset piece, because that'll be easiest. Again, I'm all about easy. You should be all about easy. Something's not meant to be super tricky, it's meant to be fun. Alright, line up this top edge. So far, so good, guys. I think it's looking great. I just gotta rivet the handles down and put a magnetic snap on. Although, I'm not sure how much will ever use the magnetic snap. Alright, into this corner. So I just kind of, it's going to have a bit of a fold over in the corner. It's just how it is. You're going into a corner. Don't stress about it too much and don't overthink it. I know, I can feel a lot of you are going to overthink that corner. Just run over it. It'll have a little bit of a crease. Doesn't matter. I'm going to put binding over it anyway. Don't overthink your corner. Alright, see, it looks curved. But we're going to put it into a point. It'll be fine, I promise. Alright. Oh, look at it! It's coming along nicely. So, we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to do half inch. Now, I'm assuming my binding will have to be done a different way through the patterns. Because I am not using vinyl. Now, I could switch to vinyl and put a black vinyl edging, or if I had rainbow, that would be even better. But I'm not going to do that, because there's no need. The pattern binds it with the same colour, and so I'm going to do the same. So again, we just kind of squish into that corner a little bit. Don't overthink it. And preferably don't push my laptop off in the process either. So I can show you my corners. They are not brilliant. Don't overthink them. Right? They're fine. Now, I'm going to shut this because we're going to do this my way. Just because the binding um, will be different. It just will be. So the first thing I'm going to want to do tuck under the raw edge about a quarter of an inch since that's what we've done everywhere else and then I'm going to fold it in half and you're going to be like why are you doing that I will show you I promise I am now going to just baste this together all the way down we're going to do it quilt style but with things joined to make my life easier Tuck under the raw edge. I've essentially made a giant shoe, but that's also irrelevant. The thing we care about is this is holding the edges. So now, I'm going to stitch that to the back. So I'm just going to line this up along the edge, and we're going to stitch it, and then we can fold it around and put it on the edge. Like this. I mean, or you can just fold it. There is that option too. So you can fold under your raw edge. And then just baste it onto the edge. Or, the other, other option is, is we do it like normal. Where we iron it, and then have both edges tucked in, like this. And then you just slip it onto the edge like so. Maybe we'll iron it. This is an effective way, um, 
but I think we'll iron it so that I don't overwhelm people. Alright, so I have done one side with the binding. I did it off camera purely because I had a phone call I had to take. Um, and I wanted to see how it went. And it went well. So, I'm going to take this. I'm going to tuck under the raw edge. And then I'm going to slot that tuck over and then fold it over. And what that does is hides the top of the raw edge as well. And we're going to add a clip. And then... I'm just going to fold it over so it's on both sides, work my way down, make sure it's going all the way over on both sides and you want to try and do it as evenly as possible. And then here we're going to go all the way to the edge and then I'm going to run it along the other side and then pinch that down so that it creates kind of a triangle like you do on quilting. When you make a blanket and then we're going to keep clipping across and over the edge and I'll show you up close I'm going to move closer for you so you can see this so we clip right before the edge we're going to fold it over and pinch it and then I'm going to put my thumb underneath flatten it down and create a little triangle and then I'm going to put a clip on it so it stays where it's tucked. And then come up the other side. Tuck under that raw edge and again over the edge. It's pulling weird. So over the edge and then tuck it in so that there's no raw edges showing. If you need to get your sew all and just tuck that bit in, please do so. Sorry, I've got the hiccups don't know why. I'm actually going to work my way down towards this edge since it just gave me some grief and I didn't like that. It is long enough you just have to maneuver it a little bit. Alright so come down to here and again fold and click. That worked out much better. And so then we're all good. Now this time we're going to do it this side up. Purely because that's the way the clips are. But you could do it the other way. We're going to come under. We're going to stitch. We're going to back stitch. Just two stitches. And I really need to hope that I'm not going to run out of bobbin thread. So I'll keep an eye on it. When we get to this corner, you want to go one, one thread into the turned corner and then just continue on. Now I don't have a scarf to wrap around the handle on this. Um, nor do I know what would suit. It would probably need to be like a solid colour, I would think. Due to the crazy nature of my print. You either go plain bag with a crazy scarf, or crazy bag with a plain scarf. But I don't have scarves or light fabric to wrap around. But we're nearly done. We just need to do our rivets for the handles. But it's cute, the whole thing. You do need to use non-directional, but so far, super cute. I'm gonna grab these. Now I'm thinking gunmetal rivets because of the fabric that is black and I think that will probably look best. Here is my box of stuff. Uh, so we're going to get out four, two, three, four rivets and four rivet posts. One, two, three, and four. I mean, you could use any colour. So what I'm going to do is on this angle, and I'll show you, move over here. I'm going to hold the handle up like this, come under 
And right in the middle of everywhere, I'm going to stab the hole. And that didn't quite get through all the layers, so I'm going to come back through this bit and go again. That worked, I felt it that time. So we're going to push it through the hole. I'm going to put the cap on the back. And then we're going to grab this, pop it under, line it up, and squish. And that's the handle. See, black was a good choice. I like it. So we're going to go again. I'm going to grab this line it up in the middle between the edge and the top stitching is what i'm classifying as the middle through and through cap on the back switch to this one now obviously if you've only got one press do all your holes and then do all the pressing otherwise you'll be back and forthing for ages and that makes the handle stand up, see? I like it. Other one again. I'm going to line it up. Under we go, in the centre. Push down as hard as you can. I didn't get through all of that, so let's try that again. Sometimes you need to do it separately. It gets there in the end though, so we're fine. It's having a bit of trouble getting through the piping plastic. I mean, it's nearly there. This one's just giving me extra grief for whatever reason. So I'm going to use my sew -all to push the fabric down around the post which helps me access it easier. Theoretically at least. I can see it, so that's a good sign. I'm just pushing all the stuff down around it to get the cap to sit on. As soon as the cap sits on, we're right to squish it. The other option is, is you can pop it up in there if they're big enough, but I've got 9mm rivets and my rivet press is technically for 10mm, so it does, you have to manually push them together. It can be done, it just takes an extra minute, that's fine. Last one to go. And then we just need to put in our rivet magnet and we're done. And it's so cute. Push down. I normally stand up to do this. It's probably why I'm having so much trouble getting through all the layers. But that's right. I really love these handles. I think they're adorable. And squish. So see now the handles sit up. The last thing to do, apart from removing that random piece of thread, is to add the rivet in the top. So I'm going to use a small one since it's a small bag. You could also use two if you wanted to as well. You have options. I'm going to line the bag up like this because this is the easiest way to find the center. And then I'm going to stab it through all the layers at once. And that way it perfectly lines up. And this is why I love rivet magnets. To separate them, I put my finger underneath and my thumb on both the spikes and just push down and it breaks open. Uh, that bit can be a little bit tricky, but it goes all right. So we now need the small size. Now you can't use the small and the big ones of the cam dies interchangeably it doesn't work i tried trust me i tried so i'm just going to unscrew this 
take that off. Pop in one side, so that will be the outer side, so we're going to do that one first. And, oh, I forgot to grab the caps. Pop the cap on, and then I've got to put the top bit in. The top bit will actually hold the cap if you want it to. I prefer to click it together myself, but each to their own. And then you'll feel it click into place and then squish it down. If you're doing these, it might be an idea to batch do them because otherwise you'll be constantly interchanging these out. Pop it underneath, line it up. You feel it click in, it can't move around anymore. And then squish. Now this side, because it's magnetic, usually takes that part with it. Ta-da! How adorable is that? It looks like lollies. I really love this bag. So, that's, that's it, really. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me on Facebook. But other than that, I will see you next time. Bye, guys!